Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, heavy downpours cause flooding in parts of New Hampshire. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. In today's world, building a stronger community can make a difference. At Catholic Medical Center, we believe if you give your heart to your country, you've earned health care that understands you. Cleanup begins in the flooded basement at Our Lady of Mercy Church in Merrimack. And when I opened the door here, I thought I had gone to Hampton Beach because I walked into the water and this whole hall was full of water. Groundskeeper Ron Ketchy calls it divine intervention. He only went downstairs to get his tools, otherwise no one would have discovered the flooding until tomorrow. The windows that were, were these wells filled up, I guess they were pouring through two sections of the windows, like Niagara Falls, because they were far out enough to fill the pews with water. Just around the corner, the library was prepared. Since this is the third summer in a row, their children's area downstairs has seen water damage. We do have issues when it rains really hard, really fast, like it did today, with um, a gully right outside of our windows that um, doesn't rain quickly enough. In Manchester, people on Carpenter Street were without power after a large tree came down blocking the road. It's been terrible because we lost electricity, first of all, and that knocked out our sump pump. So we have water flooding in the cellar with nowhere to go. And on Maple Street, four homes plagued by damaging flooding several times a year. This time, the city cleared drains ahead of the storm. You gotta start treating these rainstorms like snowstorms and start setting up for them. We're thrilled that they're now staying ahead of it. Today is a unique situation because we had a you know, six hour notice on the flash floods. The main floor of the Merrimack Library will be back open tomorrow. The church will move any classes to another building. We're live in Manchester tonight. Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And we want to hear from you. Let us know if you experienced any power outages or flooding at your house or in your town slash city. We want to hear from you. Comment below and let us know. Torrential rain produced massive flooding across Massachusetts. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. out of Worcester today as the city of the Seven Hills looked more like the city of the Seven Streams. It was pouring. You couldn't even see it, like 10 feet in front of you. It was just sheets of rain just falling down. Waterlogged roads quickly turning into rivers that caught drivers off guard, including this man here who had to be rescued by firefighters. Just got stuck in the water. <laughs> the battery went through. Not the battery, but the uh, engine. Yeah. Oh, you were able to get out though safely or... No, I had a right to these guys. The rain keeping firefighters busy all day long who ended up responding to more than 100 storm-related calls. Where's Noah's Ark when you need it? Tonight, some parts of the city still need that Ark, while others have already begun to clean up and repair the damage the storm caused. They got submerged literally right over the wheels. My car is going to be up and running once I fill it up with a little bit of water because I don't have any to freeze right now. Now, not only do you not want to drive in standing water, you also don't want to walk in it. As DPW workers tell me, some of this water is mixed with raw sewage. By the Worcester, Matt Reen, WCV News Center 5. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report.
program to put hand handlers to work gets gets boost from businesses. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 Maine. The opportunity crew is just one more aspect of why this city rocks. 13 Portland businesses contributed a total of $13,000 to keep the opportunity crew funded through the end of this season. Chris Carlson owns All Speed Cyclery and Snow on Marginal Way. He has a front row view of the panhandlers this program is trying to help. Seems like a lot of these people are kind of stuck, and if we can do something to help out and get them unstuck, you know, that's, that's great, I think. Since last spring, city officials say they've reached out to about 90 panhandlers. 24 have taken them up on the offer to do some cleanup and beautification work around Portland and be paid minimum wage for their work. Program manager Aaron Deere says he measures the program's success by more than just bags of trash collected or hours worked. We do things like help with documentation, um, identification. We help get folks connected to Mason resources that are going to help them stabilize um, and reintegrate back into um, self-sufficiency and employment roles. Five clients found future employment last year, and while it's still easy to find people panhandling in Portland, supporters of the Opportunity Crew say that's not a sign that the program isn't working. I'm a firm believer that something is better than nothing, so we're, we're doing something along with all these other great businesses, too. We're told Portland was the fifth American city to start a program like this one. The first one started in New Mexico. And since last year, the program manager here says he's been contacted by officials from New York, Virginia, Kentucky, hoping to create their own programs. I'm Paul Merrill, WMTW News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Amazon sellers say they were unfairly suspended right before Prime Day and now have two bad choices. On July 9th, Amazon put out a press release saying that Prime Day, the giant upcoming Shopping extravaganza has proven to be a huge growth opportunity for many small and medium-sized businesses. That same day, our online seller Diane got an email from Amazon employee who goes by Paul. It came with a very different message. Let's take a listen to the video. It was really frustrating, especially because they promoted it a lot. Um, there were a lot of good deals, um, especially the Instant Pot. Uh, I was looking at that as well, and um, unfortunately I wasn't able to get any shopping done. I work in tech, and stuff goes down. So, like, that's my life, so now it's everyone's life, too. It was disappointing, and I didn't have time to go through pages and pages and do searches again, so I just didn't buy it. I actually wasn't even aware that there were crashes or glitches yesterday. I think about canceling my prime subscription, actually. And if there's problems like that, I probably might be enough to tip me over to cancel. I don't think in Amazon's case that they're going to have an issue because there's such a big behemoth in the room. They really are conquering all retail right now. I'm an Amazon investor. I do a lot of shopping on Amazon. It frightens me that a company with the magnitude that Amazon has would have glitches like this in their biggest days of the year. Okay, and there you go on that video.
Kimmel rips Trump's classification ceremony about Russia meddling comments. After recapping President Donald Trump's classification ceremony on Tuesday, Jimmy Kimmel said there was only one logic expectation for the president's recent behavior. He's a liar and not even a good one. President Trump today, in an attempt to explain what the Hicklin was going through his cotton candy covered head when he was he stood next to Vladimir Putin to, of all people and took sides with Russia over our own American intelligence agency Kimmel said during his opening monologue on live now he says it was just a tiny little slip up, even similar than his fiesta. The news today is that our president is a liar and not even a good one, he added. Trump said he misspoke on Monday when he questioned the U.S. Intelligence Committee's conclusion that Russia meddling in 2016 presidential election. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.